Hello, everybody. We all know how challenging English grammar can be, especially when you are giving an exam. So in case you're struggling, we have some interesting ways to learn about English grammar. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that with some fantastic creative stories. Mm -hmm. So to begin with our first topic, I would like to invite Rudra. Infinite and finite verb story. Rohit, Rohit, we're learning about infinite and finite verbs in our class. Wow, that's so cool, man. We have a test tomorrow on this. Have you already learned about infinite and finite verbs? Yes, yes, our teacher taught us a few classes ago. Really? Okay, then test me. Okay, give me three examples of a finite verb. I am a teacher. He is a teacher. They are teachers. Well done, Gaurav. Ask me about infinite verbs too. If you say so, give me three examples of infinite verbs. I will teach the students. He will teach the students. They will teach the students. Uh, Gaurav, I think you're getting mixed up with the future tense. What do you mean, Rohit? I mean that infinite verbs usually have ing forms, ed forms, and with and without two forms. Here, you haven't used any four of those. Infinite verbs don't change their form in accordance with the subjects, whereas finite verbs do. I still don't understand, Rohit. Let me fix the example you told me. I am teaching students, he is teaching students, and they are teaching students. You see, the verbs are all the same for all types of subjects. Oh my God, I finally get it. I am hunting the students, he is hunting the students, they are hunting the students. Yes, Gaurav, you nailed it. Well done. Thank you so much, Rohit. I wouldn't have fully understood the concept without you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rudra. I think everybody got at least a little bit of gist on how verbs work. Or they are working. All right, for next, I would like to call upon Ryanj. Ryanj, it's your turn. Good morning, everybody. My name is Raj. Today, I'm going to tell about the past tense. Long ago, that the asteroids came on Earth and vanished to dinosaurs. Then a new era began. Guess, guess what era? What is it? The old, the fantasy era. In there, the 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 castles of the dinosaurs. Became into castles of kings, queens, and even dragons. One day, some a group of pixies went into a fight. They all was the other group was saying, "What are these bones of terrifying creatures I see?" They, the other group said. Did you make these? And they said no. Then they went to the problem. Should we go to the past? And then a, 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 a wizard from a castle came out. Said, why are you fighting? And they explained the reason. So the wizard said, I shall take you to the past and show what these creatures were. They saw the terrified creatures as cute and beautiful creatures because they, because they thought the bones were the dinosaurs that looked like. They looked like, but then they figured it out. And they thanked the wizard for Helping the fighter, that's it. Thank you. Have a nice day.
Okay, so clearly that story happened somewhere long ago. All right, Eileen, let's see what you have got for us. Hello, everyone. Today, I will be teaching you about how to make souffle pan. I, I mean, um, punctuation marks. Okay. Once upon a time, there were, there were many marks. There were hundreds, thousands, and millions, and billions, and gazillions of marks. And they all lived in a mark world. All of the marks had their own places and had their own roles to play. But there were a group which did not. So today, we're going to see them get their jobs. Oh, I want to come right over here, said a mark. This looks like a comfy place for me to rest. He stood right here and right here. Right here and right here. This was the exclamation mark. This was the exclamation mark. Oh, I want a roll too. Me next, me next, said the next one. And he stood right over here. Point. This was the comma. Sometimes I think about birds. Oh, I think you're forgetting something, said another mark and jumped right over here. It was the full stop. Uh, I really want to take a nap said one of the marks and collapsed right over here and dozed off to sleep. It was the question mark. And then there was a pair of twins. I want to go first. No, I want to go first. They both fought and fought until one of them decided to go first. One right over here and the other of the pair right over here. They were the quotation marks. They work in pairs. That's why they're twins. Suddenly, two marks started fighting. I want to go there. No, I want that job. No, I want that job. It's my job, not yours. Well, if you let me go to the job, I'll give you my Apple Watch. No, if you let me go to that job, I'll give you my PS4. And they bought fought and fought and fought and fought until they came to a decision. One of the marks finally let the other mark take its place. Okay, but don't forget about the PS. And the mark came right over here. Right over here. It was the colon. The other mark was the hyphen. They both are used for the exact same thing. Oh, uh, I think this needs another question mark. Hmm. Something's missing here. Hmm, the birds' beaks were singing. Yeah. I know, I know, you're missing me. And there skipped a mark and came right over, right over here. It was the apostrophe. And he stood there listening, hearing. What does that mean? I think they, it needs a, another mark, a slash. So those are all the punctuation marks and those are only the basic marks. As I said, there are trillions and jillions and bajillions more, but then these are the basic ones. All of these marks belong to a huge family living in Mark world. And the family's name is punctuation marks. Thank you. Amazing. That was really fun. 
I like meeting the punctuation mark family. Thank you guys. I hope you guys had fun and you'll be working on more such fantastic topics really soon.